Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Discussions Giving assistance to people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the Spirit Assistance Discussion is Malcolm, a First Sphere Doctor in Fear of Repentance During which Mary channels Malcolm, who was a doctor on Earth and who has been listening with concern to Jesus and Mary's discussions about forgiveness and repentance who has come to ask Jesus questions about the repentance process and his fears about beginning the process of experiencing painful emotions. The session was recorded on the 18th of April 2018 from 12 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Well, hello again. We've, we've just been channel uh, channeling Mary and myself as uh, some spirits that have... Uh, been around us since yesterday who wanted to ask questions about forgiveness and repentance and we've just finished one of those groups of spirits uh, which was led by a man named Sebastian who was in the sixth dimension and the sixth or the sixth sphere but now what we're doing is just seeing what other what groups are around this will be a, a fairly quick discussion I think depending on how it goes you know yeah. it's hard to, hard to predict these things um, but we'll try to answer as many of the questions that we can that spirits have um, but at the same time, try to help them if we can, because it, because it would be better if we can help them practically as well, mm. rather than just answering their questions. Mm. So Mary's here with me to do that. So yeah. Alan, <laughs> no. thanks for your time again, and let's uh, let's see who who wants to ask the next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering. I have a I have a question here that I wrote from a group of male spirits. Again, it was um, uh, because they were quite insistent with their question. So I thought perhaps if I just read you the question and... It'd probably be good if we can get some background from them though and things like that because um, cause I need a little bit of context to feel them. You certainly. And then I can help yeah. them with their questions better. Mm. Okay. It won't take long, it's only a few minutes. And... No, I'm going to read you the question though because yeah. it's long and extensive mm -hmm. and it's a sync, sort of dot pointed. Sure. And then I'll connect to them. Sure. This man was called Malcolm mm -hmm. um, and uh, who's leading this group. So we'll do that if that's right. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So he came and asked me, when you speak about repentance, it sounds like experiencing a lot of pain and a very difficult process. At the moment, I can see that I manage my pain and experiences via addictions. Um, is starting repentance going to involve a long period of severe pain without relief as, as I go through the experience of everything I've done to others? Many times I want to put off looking at how I have harmed others even though I can now see I did things in my marriage to my children and in my career that were harmful mm -hmm. because I believe it will be like stepping into hell for eternity and if not eternity and a prolonged period. Mm. From what you speak of, I have clearly done a lot of harm. I want to put off repentance as long as possible. I understand that you say that putting it off only makes matters worse mm -hmm. or the pain worse but i really feel that the pain i will have to experience will be so excruciating i don't want to look into doing it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so I'll just see if hello hello malcolm thank you for speaking with me i I am feeling quite fearful about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think my question has been stated. Mm -hmm. And is it exactly how you feel it? Yes, I, it does seem though that I have a problem with the preoccupation with it. I'm, I'm very worried that, I mean, it seems obvious that I've done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but just now I start to wonder, am I just worrying about, is it really that bad or I, I don't really know. Mm. Um, uh, I do think I've done a lot of bad things, mm -hmm. you know, not bad by society standards, but when I listen to you talk, I think that's a lot of bad things that I've done. Mm -hmm. 
So you that, know, I didn't believe in God, and I taught my children there was no God. Mm -hmm. And and I was a surgeon, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I helped people avoid their pain a lot mm -hmm. by giving them operations. Mm -hmm. um, and but what was your motivation at the time? Well, what, I, with the operations with the people you were helping. Well, I I thought I was doing my best for them. So the best for them. Yeah, it was an attempt to alleviate their pain, wasn't it, to a large degree? Mm. So you were trying to your 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 understanding now is different to then, but when you look at you you know when you look at your attitudes, then you can see that your attitude wasn't really bad towards them, was it? Was it? Did you just treat them as a money making machine, or did you actually have an interest in them? <laughs> Well, I, I, no, I didn't. I saw them as human beings who did, I wanted their, them to be healthy. Yeah, and so um, I don't know if I was particularly, you know, connected to them in any kind of personal way. But mm. I saw their mm. bodies and mm -hmm. their problems, and I thought, no, it's not good for people to live with sickness and illness, mm -hmm. I'll do what I can to fix it in the prescribed way mm -hmm. that I understood at the time. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. You had a motivation that was good. Um, and remember that the way... But I was also arrogant and, and I could be quite callous to people, you know, crying and things. Oh, of course. There's a, there's, you can see for most people on earth, there's a mixture of things I've done, isn't there? It's, like, it's not all bad. <laughs> it's like there, there's good things that you did and there's bad things that you did, you know, and you can easily see the difference sometimes where you say, oh, you know, yeah, well, I was condescending to people a lot. You know, well, that, that is a problem, you know, and many surgeons are condescending and, then, and they're probably... If you think about your education as a surgeon, you're frequently educated to be condescending towards people because they don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Um, so that, you know, that, that is a problem, you know, from God's perspective, obviously, and from, from the ethics, you know, and morality perspective, that is a problem. But, but also there was this underlying motivation to help people too, wasn't there? So that, that, that is a good thing. You know, it's not, it's not even though you weren't helping them in the way that you thought you were, so now that you know better, you know, through your own investigation, you can see things better mm. through your own investigation. Obviously, you've got more information available to you now and you can see, oh, what, maybe what I was doing wasn't helping that much. But, but at the end of the day... No, and I see many addictions, of course. emotional addictions that I had. Yes, no, that, that, and that's normal. That's normal. Every person usually who's lived a life on earth experiences all of these things, right? That, 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 these are all normal things to experience so that's the first thing i'd like to say to you but just because something is i mean i've heard you talk about this mm -hmm. just because something is normal doesn't mean it's good no I, I agree with that but but you've also got to be careful about over dramatizing it it is what it is some mm -hmm. of it was taught some of it you engaged in your own uh, on your own because of your desires some of it you engaged out of addictions many of which you earned or learnt from your family so, so not all the things inside of you are your own fault, um, but, but obviously things can be cured, changed now, you know, we can change things now. The key is to not over-dramatise the situation, even when we come face to face with truth. That's the first thing I'd like to say. What you're doing is you're entering a state of fear when you come face to face with truth, and this prevents you from accepting more truth. Well, okay. So that's the first thing. Mm. Because I, I don't know. I don't know if I should bite it off, you know. I haven't mm. really, I mean, I, I sense there's, there's a transition, there's a difference between just like mm. hypothesising about what it is that I might have to repent for and, and really knowing. Exactly. And I'm very, I, I agree, I'm afraid to know because mm. it just seems monstrous and yeah. it just seems that I'll be... You know, is it true I'll just be in blackness for the if, while I deal with it all? No, where are you now? What do you mean? W what location of the spirit world are you now? Well, I'm here. When what you say you you're mean? here, you mean you're on earth still? No. No? No, I have a place. Okay, you have a place. What does it look like? You describe that place to me. Well, it's fairly average. Mm -hmm. When you say fairly average? If you could describe it in comparison to places on Earth, that might help. 
I guess it's sort of like mm, there's not that many people around, right? But it is kind of like mm, you know, like a city that's quite populated. Yes. And there's not much greenery or mm -hmm. You know, it's mainly grey buildings and concrete and, mm -hmm. you know, a bit of smog in the air. and yeah. So so what city did you not, live in on It's Earth? not terribly oppressive or yeah. anything. It's not like Jakarta or something, <laughs> yeah. you know. But um, it's... You've obviously been to Jakarta. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I lived in New York, actually, right. at various times in my life. And I lived of, in the United States. And it's sort of similar to New York yes, in some places? Yes, but not so many people. Right. It's just, yeah. I'm just saying it's got the same feeling, like yeah. there's not yeah. much greenery and it's yeah. sort of, you know, um, the buildings are, Old you know, no, well, no. D uh, it's functional. Yeah. Everything yeah. is functional, but there's yeah. no frills whatsoever. No worries. Yeah. And, you know, my place is adequate. It's not that comfortable, but it's not Yeah. So you're terribly. living in an apartment there, are you? Or? Yes. Yeah. But there's not a lot of people. No. It's yeah. not like a lot of people like a city. I, it's the wrong characterization, but there's no nature is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Build, just buildings. A lot of buildings and... Yes, and it's not particularly populated, but it's not particularly a ghost town either. It's just sort of... Yeah. There's not a lot of... So the, the, there's for not the, a lot of for the know, amount of vibrancy. buildings. Yeah, for the amount of buildings, does it seem to be that there's less people than there are buildings? Well, it, it doesn't sort of feel like a deserted city, if yeah. that's what you mean. Yeah. It does. It just feels like I haven't told you well. No, that's all right. That's all right. It's not like high rises. It's yep. just like you know the feeling in a big city where there's not much nature and it's yeah. a bit dirty it's yeah. not squalid but it's no. just a bit you know grubby yeah. on the pavement yeah. and there's just a little bit of exhaust fumes in the air yeah. but not like jakarta it's not like it's unbreathable uh, or anything like that no it's and so smelly that you can't bear it then there's no backyard or anything there's another house and but we don't, there's not much interaction. You don't spend much time with people, do you? No, and there's yeah. not much, you know, you know, you know, when you, uh, you know, when you're in a town or a city, you hear sometimes, you know, people laughing or yeah. things going on or there's a yeah. bit of vibrancy. No, that's not here. Not here. It's just sort of Seems to be bland. inhabited by a, a lot of people who are loners. Hmm, probably. Were you mm. a loner too? Mm, hmm. Probably, probably. Yes. Yep. I worked. Yeah. The way God's made it is that we, our soul condition attracts the environment. So, so your soul currently is attracting this environment. So the fact that there's not many people around is is a feeling that you have that you don't really want that many people around. You know what I mean? Mm. And and you never really wanted a lot of people around on Earth, even though you lived in cities. You lived a fairly sort of a busy but alone sort of a life would that mm. be true mm. yeah i mean i mean i had a family of but, course yeah. you know I, but even there there wasn't a lot of intimacy no. between yourself and your wife i i'd probably say that i don't i didn't really yes i i liked things fairly clinical and scientific really yes. i didn't really like all the kind of emotional exchange yeah, mm. and and it's true. This place, there's not a lot of vibrancy or emotionality here. Yeah. It's sort of not a lot of emotional I've, exchange. No, I I feel quite comfortable here. Of course, but I am very fact, worried now. You in know, fact, now where I'm, where you are is going to be the most comfortable place you could be given your current feelings. Mm. That's that's how God makes it, so mm. that wherever you are is the most comfortable place you could be. But since you've been talking about all this forgiveness and repentance, mm -hmm. you know, and I've been listening, and mm -hmm. it's just terrible. It's yeah. just terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I, I. I don't feel. I don't feel like I can do it. Yeah. Well. Everything you've said. There's a lot of things that I can say to you, but let's <laughs> let's just go through a few things, shall we? Mm.
Yes, yes, please. Yeah, thank because you. Thanks you, you for want some help. answer to those questions yes, that you're yes, asking, of course. Yes, yes. So, so I just, I ruminate, you know, I, I'm a bit worried. Yeah, know. yeah. And what I'm saying to you is this worry that you feel is really unnecessary because you can't get worse than where you are. In other words, no matter what you deal with from now on, you can't get in a worse condition or in a worse place than where you currently are. But you yeah. are. But what about the terrible pain? Well, you know, the where you are things. is a mirror of, is already, the, the, the pain you're in already is the worst pain you're going to ever experience. Well, right? well that's not that bad then. I'm quite well, no, uh, let me just clarify that for a bit. You are in denial of a lot of your pain at the moment. Oh, well, that's what I mean. <laughs> so, that's so. what I mean. Do I rip off the Band-Aid and look at these terrible things that I've done? I mean, I've been a doctor, so it means you've been involved with human life, you know. It means that you haven't always, from what I listen to you, you haven't always respected the life principle, you know. Mm. It's, it's, mm. it's a problem. You haven't always and respected that the person has a right to decide for themselves even. Uh, no. You know? sure <laughs> and that, and babies, you know, I, don't, I never, you know, I never aborted a baby, but there's issues, there's things. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's no, a long it. career that I had and many things that seem now very grey area and yeah, and yeah. It, you know do I do it's all it's almost feels like there's sort of like you know it's not literal but it's like do I open the door and, and just see the blackness that so you're it, worried that, about Pandora's box <laughs> and yes. what it's going to reveal yes, yes. Yeah. very much <laughs> yeah well, uh, the reason why I say firstly that you, you're not going to get into a worse condition by doing it is because most people who begin this process do believe they're going to get into a worse condition by doing it. So, Well, it's going to be worse if, if I have to experience all of the pain that all of those people... No, it's like. going to be emotional. Yes. But not necessarily worse because you still have at least... <laughs> well, for someone like me, those two things are synonymous, <laughs> yeah. but yes. And that's the issue that I would like to raise with you. Mm. The fact that you believe emotions are synonymous with hell is a problem. Mm. This, is a, this demonstrates a fear of emotion. Mm. And what you're really saying to me uh, is, a f is you're, you're, you're basically discussing your fear of emotion. You're, wor uh, yeah. you're worried about what it's going to mm. do. You know, so you're to... saying it's not so much the th what I've done to others. Mm -hmm. You really, you're not so worried. My feelings are that you're not so worried about what you've done to others. You're more worried about how it's going to feel, right? And that, and and mm. this demonstrates that you you really have a strong fear of emotion. Mm. Right. And I understand why, you know, many people who engage scientific uh, ways of life on Earth do have a strong fear of emotion, which is one of the reasons why they become scientists or doctors or, uh, you know, people who are more interested in the sciences. And um, God created us to be balanced in that regard. You know, we still be interested in science. You know that I'm interested in science, but, but I'm also interested in emotion. You know, so the, the two things to me are important. And and the reality is, once you open up your life emotionally, you'll be much, much happier than you currently are. In fact, one of the reasons why your life is like it is right now in the spirit world is because you're not opening yourself to emotion. And, and as a result, the environment can't be vibrant. When you open yourself to emotion, you, you'll see some colour in your environment. You'll see some, you know, vegetation too in your environment, but you'll also see colour and vibrancy in, in, and you'll start having good experiences with people who are vibrant too. At the moment, if anyone you meet is is fairly mundane and plain, aren't they? They, they, they don't express themselves strongly. Mm. Um, they like to withdraw and so forth. Similar, similar to how you've been feeling yourself. Mm. So, so the place that you're living is, is the worst place you're ever going to live in your future. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> that's a relief. Uh -huh. I mean, but I don't know if I believe you because, I, I mean, I've... I... Well, no, the place where you're living is exactly what matches your condition. And your condition is such 
that you've got all these emotions inside of you and all these things that you did inside of you already. So the fact is where you're living right now is exactly matching your condition. <laughs> But when I think mm. about um, connecting to the pain... Yes. Your condition won't get worse, it will get better. But won't I be in some kind of blackness? I feel like I'm going to be in blackness. I don't feel so, no. Mm. You're afraid of that, mm. but, but it's just a fear. And, and it's because you're afraid of emotion that you're afraid of this happening. Mm. It's just a fear you have. It's, it's, it's not real. The reality is where you currently are is where you are going to remain if you do nothing. And if you do something, you can only get into a better place. <laughs> That's the reality. So the fears that you have are just fears. Now, at some point, you've got to let them be fears rather than be truth. At the moment, you see them as truth. You're worried that they're, they're true. Mm -hmm. you, you're worried that if you start an emotional process, you're worried that it's never going to end. It's, it's just going to make your life really hellish and you won't even be able to see anything. You'll be, you'll be in a place of darkness. This is what you're worried about. Mm. But uh, while there are places of darkness in the spirit world that are much worse than where you're currently living, the reality is your condition doesn't allow you to live there because your condition is better than those places. So what do I do then? So I should rip off the Band-Aid then and face it. Well, if you were, if I came to you as a patient and I said, look, I've got this great big stick sticking in my arm. Um, what will you do for me, Doc? <laughs> what would you do? Yes. Well, yes. I, I, <laughs> would you leave it in and say, no, just wrap it up and bandage it and leave it there? No, I'd schedule the <laughs> surgery and even if they were worried, I'd say, well, it's for your own good. Exactly. Would you not? Yes. Uh, so what else can I say to you about that, really? <laughs> can you see that? Like, mm. uh, you, if you think about it, all of these things uh, that you feel, they're like, they're like sort of damage to your body, aren't they, in a way? They, they, they're, like, they're like pain sticking in you. And you have the choice of getting some assistance to get them out or ripping them out yourself if you don't want any assistance. <laughs> you can do that too. Mm. Um, or you could even ask God for help to take them out, which would be an interesting process in itself. Mm. And I know that you're not that certain about God or at this stage, but um, you know, if, if there is a God, it would be interesting to involve uh, that as an experiment to see whether mm. that helps the process. Mm. But you can see that you, as a doctor, you would never advise me to leave it all in. No. And whatever fears I had about you operating on me and taking it out, what would you say about that? <laughs> I had the benefit of anaesthetic, though. I'd like some anaesthetic here. Well, maybe uh, God has some benefit of anaesthetic. <laughs> mm. You don't know that, do you? No. At this stage, you only know, you know, you only know that there's stuff in you that has to come out, and that's really all you know at this point. No, well... I I feel a lot calmer, yeah. really. So when you come to me in your first question, you're really in a panic. Mm. Uh, you worry and, and you, you need to see that as a panic and, and it's not necessarily realistic. Mm. And in fact, you need to trust that wherever your location is right now, it can't get worse because whatever your soul is, in, in, whatever the condition of your soul is right now determines your location. So it can't get worse than it is. Mm. It can only get better if you do something about it. That's mm. all. So that's the first thing I wanted to say to you, just to help allay some of those fears that you have. Hopefully that doesn't feed your addiction to stay there. <laughs> no, no. I, in if, if anything, I feel convinced now to, yeah. to, face, if, to face it. And, and I... Well, and... What I'm going to do is ask a, a, a friend of ours to come to you. Mm -hmm. he, he'll introduce himself to you. Mm -hmm. His name is Nathan. Mm -hmm. And he'll be able to help you go through some of the process and explain to you the details of the process that you need to go through. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Now, um, ask Nathan first, though, a bit about his background. What, what do you learn from Nathan yes. about his background? No, he understands. Yeah. 
He's, he's had the same fear, right? Yes. He was pretty afraid of emotion when he started this process. He arrived in a similar place. Oh, by the way, we should ask him where you are because you, you didn't really know where you are. In the first, he said. In the first fear, yeah. And in the first fear, there's many gradi gradient levels, I suppose you could say, um, you know, that go deep into darkness, you know, a lot, a lot worse places than, than, than what you, your soul has attracted, you have attracted at this point. And, we're, and unless, unless you decide to go there, you will never go there, you know, unless you decide to have a look, you know, as a doctor, you may at some point decide to have a look. But, and, and I know I can probably ask Nathan this now, but mm -hmm. uh, when, I mean, obviously I can see that I'm avoiding things here. Well, yes. Uh, and so, your environment is supportive of your avoidance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I, you know, as I rip off the Band-Aid, as it were, mm -hmm. and, you, you know, I've decided now to do that. Yeah. I mean... It will be painful. Yes, but but you see, the pain you're in is the worst pain you're going to be in in terms of location and everything. So while you, as soon as you start releasing some of your pain, your location will improve, mm. and so this will sort of have the effect of sort of negating. You, you'll see the rewards of feeling the pain. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. It's not like your location is going to stay the same. And, and you have to do all this painful work and nothing changes. It's not going to be like that. See, on Earth, it's a bit like that sometimes. It feels like that sometimes on Earth. But in the spirit world, it's not like that. The way God's created it for the spirit world is that once you release your pain, the location around you also changes and it improves. So, so you start to see, oh, I've made a bit of progress. Mm. And then you can start seeing the relationship between letting go things and the rewards associated with letting go those things. Mm. And on earth, it's a bit harder to see that because the rewards are more internal initially until you start sort of making some major progress, then the external things start to become obvious. But in the spirit world, the external things are obvious the instant you make the change. Mm. So this sort of helps you to see, oh, I'm, in the, I'm going in the right direction. Does it make sense? Yes. And this is why you don't really have to trust me about that. If you just try getting rid of one thing and seeing what effect that has in your, in your, uh, you know, in your environment, and you go, oh, I can now see the correlation between my releasing something, in, uh, in other words, my soul condition, my condition improving, and my environment improving as a result. Now, Nathan's going to give you a picture of where he arrived in the first, when he died. Mm. So where did he arrive? It's similar but worse. Really. Similar but worse than your place, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And what, what was he on Earth? He was a biologist. Right. So he was, a, he, again, in the sciences. Mm. Yep. So he's quite shut down to emotion. Mm. Yep. And, and a, a botanist, you know, he was into plants. Yes, and and what and what happened to him? Somebody came and helped him. Hmm. Yep. Just like he's come mm. to you to help you. Mm. Yep. And uh, he listened. Mm. Yes. And made yes. some progress and changes, and as a result, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and did he ever get into a worse place than when he arrived? No. So there's a, you don't need to worry about that. Mm. You see, and this is one thing most doctors on earth still don't really understand, even psychologists on earth don't really understand, is that if you truly deal with an emotion, you can't get into a darker place than where you currently are. It's mm. when you decide to suppress your emotion that results in the darker place than where you are even psychologically, right? So it's an important lesson to understand that mm. the suppression of emotion or the suppression of painful emotions in this case is actually what causes a harder condition and even eventually can lead to a psychotic condition on earth, right? But, and even in the spirit world can end up in a psychotic condition mm. as well.
Mm. Um, but you're not in that place. No. And it's highly unlikely you'll get to that place because if you start your progress by feeling these feelings that you have, then you can't get to that place. Mm. You're only afraid you might, that's all. Yes. <laughs> which, is, which is different. It's, it's just a fear and you've just got to recognise that as a fear. Yeah. So it's, I should get on now and do that, I feel. Yeah, yeah, there's no time like the present in mm. the spirit world, <laughs> is there? Mm. So you're in the middle of the first fear of the spirit world. And obviously, uh, the more you progress, you'll get to the stage where there'll be colours. You'll see a lot of colour and you'll see greenery and, and so forth. And, and there's also many other spheres beyond that. But one thing I'd also like to suggest to you, and, and this is something you can ask Nathan, did he do this initially on his own or with God's help? No, he did it with God's help. And, and I'm very glad, I'm very glad because yeah. I can talk to him about this now. Yes. Because I've been watching, you know, I've been watching. And For quite I've a been, few years, yes, haven't you? Yeah. I've been thinking about God. Yeah. yeah. And I and I've been afraid, and he can. He's it's a very reassuring thing yeah. that he's gone through it. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to show you a picture of where he is now, if he can do that for you. <laughs> it's so nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so a big, big difference, isn't it, between mm. where you are and mm. where you are. So this, yeah. this should can, yeah. give you some hope that yeah. if you go through this emotion, it's not, it's not going to, like, your question was, is it going to end up all black and it's going to be all terrible and it's all going to be terrible, you know, and, and it's just going to be a terrible thing? You know, no, it's not. It's gonna, you, you're going to see the improvements in your life. You'll see the improvements in your environment. You'll also feel happier. Every little, it's like, you know, as a doctor, when you're removing Pro objects that got stuck in people from from mm -hmm. from you know glass or something like that every new thing that was removed they felt less pain mm -hmm. and that's how it's going to be for yourself so you don't need to worry about the process so much you just need to have some faith that if you start this process it's very similar to a process of fixing fixing up the physical body and that is that there are some pain obviously because it you need it needs to be fixes to happen but but obviously it's going to end up in less pain in the in the very short term mm. yeah and that and that's the thing to remind yourself of all the time pain is a is a consequence of the life already led mm. and as long as you now change that life and live your life differently you can't create more you can only get rid of the pain you've already created mm. yeah yeah. Thank you very much. I'll leave you in Nathan's mm -hmm. capable hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And he will take me to see my family too. Yes, because you, you haven't wondered where they are, mm -hmm. haven't you? Mm -hmm. Can I just ask you when you passed? Do mm -hmm. you remember any details about your passing? Not long ago. Not long ago. No, no. so in 1980. Yeah, yeah. And so there is family here already, but there's also my grandchildren, yeah. people on earth that I haven't seen. seen. I That's haven't right. known how to see them. And, yeah. and he's shown me now it's because I'm afraid to feel how I will feel when I see them. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You've been so afraid of feelings mm -hmm. that you've limited your life quite extensively. Mm -hmm. and, and the spirit life is a lot more, there's a lot more freedom but only if you deal with it emotionally. Mm. Uh, it's the emotions that constrain your freedom. So, so it's wonderful you've got to see people, feel a bit more connection in your life again, and also you know, make those changes that you want to make about you know, the, the things you recognise that are obviously out of harmony with love that you now recognise to be. And I feel you'll make very, very fast progress, Malcolm. You know, there's, no, there's nothing to inhibit you, but your own, but your own fear of emotion. Mm. Jolly good then. Yeah. <laughs> thank right. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's very good to speak with you, and and uh, and I'm glad you asked your question because I know a lot of people on Earth are pretty scared of emotion <laughs> too. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is it all right? Hmm. It's funny when people are afraid of emotion, they 
talk about, talk about, talk about, talk about <laughs> more rapidly than you can get a word in size place, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. It's interesting in some ways because he was doing the same thing as the six fear spirits were doing about their emotional condition, just talking, talking, talking. Just, you know, <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting as well, isn't it, how he is obviously, um, yeah, I mean, how long's he been in the spirit world? Like 30, 38. 30 nearly 40 years. Mm. Um, this is fairly normal probably for a person in his condition to, in that, in that location, mm. to live like that for a, about that time. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, but it's interesting also, I mean, Sebastian was, had been in the spirit world for 500 years mm. and just the difference in terms of receptivity to God, I mean, Malcolm felt... Uh, almost more open. Yeah, he was. He, he still had his doubts about God, but he wasn't blocked completely, like with with mm. anger, you know, mm. which is what Sebastian felt, you know, mm. more than more than he'd probably recognise. He'd know that now, but mm. but bef before the discussion, he didn't realise. Yeah. Mm. And that's why a person in the first sphere can progress sometimes faster than a person in the sixth sphere. It depends on the openings that they make, doesn't it? And the different attractions they have as a result, and then also how they choose to the choose their they will. Make, yeah, yeah. Their, sorry, their desires. And it's so always on. their choices. Yeah. In the end, what they what they decide they're going to pursue, what and what their current condition. Um, that parts of their current condition that they don't challenge hey yeah as a doctor malcolm was is quite like he's quite humble for for a doctor because mm. my, although he's had 40 years to I get was gonna humble, say yeah, I don't know if but, he but he, he, he's quite humble in the sense that you know he could admit the he, he was arrogant on earth mm. and he could admit certain things about his life and he could admit that he doesn't know about this god thing and he yeah you know he could admit those things whereas you know oftentimes you know, if you pass over with more arrogance than mm. that, you can't admit certain things to yourself. Yeah. So that's a huge bearing. It's interesting as well, isn't it, to think about how many people um, who have on earth like big kind of arrogant facades <laughs> who are seemingly quite accomplished but are actually harbouring like a ton of fear. Mm. Like you said mm. to him... Well, Sort of, I think you said to him, like, his condition can't get worse, but it probably hasn't really worsened since he entered the spirit world, has it? And He's been so too that, afraid to <laughs> do anything but, that might worsen it. But that indicates that, you know, you know, someone who was obviously quite accomplished in his profession and seemingly had a pretty fearless profession, mm. you have to have some pretty, you know, you have to be pretty gutsy to cut other people open. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, but he was obviously suppressing all of that fear yeah, but, all of that time. But doing something physical to another person, not the same as dealing with your emotions. emotions. Yeah. yeah. So he could just Emotional have physical... bravery is a rare thing on the planet. Yeah. As you know. As I know. Yeah. 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 So, you know, a mm, person might be quite brave. Like physically or whatever, but emotional yeah. bravery is, is a different matter. Yeah. Dealing with the actual emotions and feelings is a different yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for mm. sure. Okay. 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 Thanks, Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no think... no others that. Yeah. No. I think I think we'll leave it at that today, yeah. hey? Because yeah. we've got another meeting. We have. Yeah. 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 All right. I just say thank you to yeah. our audience. Thanks for listening in, and hopefully you've benefited from those two conversations we've had with it, mm. some of our spirit friends. So we'll see you another time. <laughs> <laughs>